Hello YouTube and welcome to Ground Forks. This is episode 69 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. And in this episode, we will be constructing something uh, bigger. So, well, as you can see, we are in much need of resupply stations. And uh, not only the resupply stations, but also the recycling station. So what I'm now trying to construct, especially this is more than so valid for the longer missions like Jewel. So I'm now trying to construct a ship that would be able to go to Jewel and also do some of the recycling. So I'm sending a big supply of uh, food, water and oxygen, but also I want to include uh, the tech life support components that would be able to recycle well the all waste materials apart from food and then just to have them reused so like air purifiers and uh, water purifiers and whatnot so yeah and I want it to be nuke power so unlocked uh, in the I think last or the episode before that I have unlocked this big fission reactors so I want to put them to a good use and now I'm just trying to find the correct radiators for it so I'm just trying to find where are they hiding and I also have the MXL but I don't need the MXL or MX1 what's the benefit okay yeah I could use the MXL let's put the biggest one why not I do over engineer all of my craft so why should this be any different okay let's put the radiators on and yes now this looks more like it so I'm just looking by the what how much heat do they radiate and what core does it radiate so yes and this one will be going on a longer mission so I do want to put the fuel reprocessor but I might actually hold off for that one or not let's just put it here yeah so this one will be reprocessing the waste nuclear fuel which would be basically extending the life of this generator because this generator doesn't have that long of a life by the time it gets there it will run a couple of years and then it will die so yeah I think it's better that we just add another a little bit more well basically nuclear fuel and I'm thinking like four pods like this loaded with the small tanks yeah something like that that should hopefully extend the life expectancy of this uh, reactor and also the possibility for the nuclear fuel to get reprocessed I'm also putting some RTGs for basic power generation even when if we have the radio reactor shut down and now I'm putting the water purifier and the air filter I guess or it's filter or recycler I don't know exactly but it's from tech life support uh, then I want to put two remote guidance units also some I believe uh, yeah and I'm just now thinking well I put two four or six so I think I'm gonna stick with four I'm still trying to figure out how I will propel this guy and I'm thinking of near future I want to give it another shot so yes but I'm also by the way guys my game crashed and I just had to redo some of the parts but never mind so two that would be communicating to our two long-range satellites then shorter range antennas to become like relaying toward the different planets so it's kind of secondary use as an also comms relay I guess another docking port because this one be, would be a part of the bigger space station I guess but um, since this will be remote tech based I cannot actually dock it until I get the command station close by so it will be just two components close to each other and now I'm putting like tricouplers at the bottom of these and here I will be using these little guys so I'll use near future propulsion 
like a cluster of 12 engines in total to be powering the Minecraft. And uh, I need also some fuel. I need some xenon fuel, so I'm putting like this radial xenon tanks. Let's just put two, ooh, 3000 delta V per pair of tanks. Wow, now that's efficient. Our thrust to weight, obviously it's abysmal, it's 0 0.09, but ultimately I don't care. I just want to see how it runs. And this is the guy in the orbit, let's activate our communitron, toggle the radiators and start up the reactor. And our, mm, our power generation is going up and we can see it in our um, fuse box. And now let's stage all the engines and let's begin thrusting. So a total of 0 0.13, 0 0.13 um, thrust weight. Well, it will be a pain to actually get that one anywhere, but its fuel economy more than warrants it. It's 7,000. And it's a heavy station part that we will be using onwards. So, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with the result. So, let us construct a lifting stage for this. So, yeah. Just now looking if I did miss anything. And I think this probe core might be a good thing to have. Or not probe core, sorry, mm, communication dish. Let's see. Oh, this is not going to cut it. So let's see. 3.75 expanded fairing base. Hmm. Hmm, maybe. Just maybe. And my antennas are sticking out. Dang it. Okay. So I'm just going to use the construction tools to put these guys uh, slightly inside like push them slightly inwards and I think this could be used like this and much better oh still sticking out hold on and a little bit like this great I mean it's not a big push just let's say I was more economical with tightening the screws so yeah please don't judge me anyway um, yes, so let's see, I'm now just putting 3.75 uh, meter tank and I'm putting the Rhino engine, but it wasn't enough, then let's put this bad boy. Okay, yeah, thrust weight 1.57, which is enough, but Delta V 3.4 might be sufficient, but I don't know when, I don't want to risk it. So I'm just gonna put like two additional boosters and those are just heavy as hell. So I actually could use just these two guys. I mean, I don't need that much of Delta V addition in addition. So let's put the uh, staging and also the fuel lines, which will uh, ensure that we have better spread out of the thrust weight. And I think we should have now 4.2, which should be more than enough. Great. Overall, I'm pretty happy with what it looks. It looks pretty much standard as all of my rockets do, but then again, I just wanted to make sure to put Communitron on the one, toggle Communitron on the action group one. Perfect, and it's added to the build list, and let us just suspend some upgrades in terms of accelerating that one because the curve into Julio isn't always 26 days and this one is going to be constructed in 41. Crap. So it won't be going to Jewel. It will be a recycling station that go, will go somewhere else. I'll actually make another one later and launch it on the next curve into Jewel window, I guess. Well, what can you do? Okay, then uh, recycling station is being made. But three hours out, we have our advanced lander that's already rolled out on the flight pad. And let's put Rem T. Kerman 
Rem, you will be the first Kerbal to visit the Jewel system. I hope you're proud. So, well, standard launch. This is Rem T is the second Kerbal that's going on an interplanetary mission. Jebwe being the first one and uh, Rem will be the second one. So, first set of booster separates. Burning for the apoapsis. We'll go once again for 110, roughly, that's the idea anyway. And then we will see how do we take it from there. Apoaps is around 80, which is nice. Second pair of boosters gone. Okay, yeah, 110, and I think I'm gonna stick at that so that we don't collide with my orbital lab. I mean, it's a slight chance, but it always is a chance, so, yeah. I mean, given the how difficult rendezvous actually is to achieve, and now I only notice that only two of my engines are burning, which is kind of stupid because I actually did put, like, um fuel lines so I could burn with all three, ensuring much better distribution of thrust to weight. Well, what can you do? I guess it was not that necessary. Okay, 135 by 37, we're just gonna fix this a little bit at the apoapsis, and in three hours we have also our transfer to Joule, which is great, so REM you buddy didn't have to wait very long in the orbit before you actually get your chance to go to Jewel. That's very nice. Okay, and uh, yeah, node minus three sec three minutes, and that's just for the circularization, or actually to circularize it in circularize it in a better manner. Sorry guys, my tongue is twisting. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, okay, and let's lower our apoapsis slightly. I'm perfectly aware that we don't need to have the perfect orbits, but then again, my calculations for the um, transfer windows are based on this 100 kilometers or 110 kilometer orbits, and I want to have it as close as possible. It makes the transfers much easier. So now I'm just making sure that I put in all the parameters into my mm, into my precise node. So I'm just checking and evaluating our transfer, and I'll, I'll, I'll obviously obviously fiddle uh, it, to see if I can get a better encounter, which I can. Perfect. W w w w okay. Something along these lines looks pretty decent to me. Okay. Just making sure that I'm arriving at the correct angle and everything. And I might also get a lathe encounter, which would be just perfect. Uh, that transfer is gonna happen in another 32 minutes. So let us just align progress. And I think, guys, uh, after I do that transfer, I'm going to call this for an episode. It's going to be a little bit shorter episode. Um, yeah, sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of trying to balance it out because I already did make some footage afterwards and I don't see it thematically, you know, fitting with these transfers. So I think I'll just stick to that. Uh, okay, 2 minutes and 56 seconds, so burning, and we have now and decoupling the last set of boosters, except for the, and I think this will be our transfer stage, that's why I added the big life support modules, because I want to be arriving like this at Jewel so that I have all the sweet Delta V that I can to go and muck around. 
perfect, so let us just burn for the encounter, pushing our periaps or apoapsis. And... Yep, coming in, and... Whoa, 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 whoa. Oops, a little bit too high. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. Well, it does encounter jewels, so I might actually do a maneuver note later where I just fix and make sure that I fix the orbit. And I should be coming from this side, seeing the how planets rotate. So yeah, I do want to come in the same in the same direction as the planets that are rotating. So that was a shame. I had a nice late encounter, but then again, it would probably be in the wrong. Um, yeah wrong direction so very careful with how I escape Kerbin that I don't mess up okay and I don't know but this patch connect list this is just wrong the Sun Apple it just looks way off and some science well let's collect and dang it already made its mark it has burnt one of my light bulbs. Well, dang it. You know, honestly, I don't care. <laughs> I might just fix it just for spite. Okay, saving the results from the materials bay and taking spare and fixing the light bulb. Well, dang it, simply put, bah, you know, sorry, maybe that's unprofessional, but I really, at this point, how much dang it is, caused me some grief, I really feel I should return the favor. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, fixing our approach towards Jewel, or lathe for that matter and I think yes I've gotten I, I wouldn't getting a lathe encounter over here beautiful and I actually might get an lathe capture so I might get capture on in the orbit around Jewel when passing by lathe that would be awesome so let's call it Jewel Lander Rem so that we know that Rem T you got dude are piloting this uh, yes, that's beautiful. Okay, let's back, get back to the space center. And as you guys might have noticed, we have... We want to complete the recycling station because now there's nothing that should happen before. And let's go and unlock these guys. I really wanted to unlock it because it gives me 2.5... Uh, 2.5 uh, booster. Or 2.5 nuclear rocket. And now, let's see, we have 575 more science. What are we gonna put it for? Colony life support. Yes, that I'm thinking. Mm, capacitors, yeah, why not? Let's just invest in some of these. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm gonna call it for this episode. Like if you like the episode and Hit that subscribe button for more KSC content that should be coming soon. Thank you again for watching. This is Gromforks signing off.